there. Welcome to Mathematics Alive. And our lesson for today is geometric patterns. Let's start with the concept of tessellations. A tessellation is created when a shape or a combination of shapes are repeated over and over again, covering a plane without any gaps or overlaps using transformations. Another word for tessellation is tiling. In 1519, Johannes Kepler became the first person to complete a study of tessellations after he explored the hexagonal structure of honeycombs and snowflakes. Almost 300 years later, Russian crystallographer Ibgrab Fyodorov began the study of tessellations in mathematics. Tessellations were first used by Sumerians at about 4000 BC to build wall decorations in pattern of clay tiles. Then, they then became popular decorations in classical antiquity. Some of the most famous tessellations are the Moorish wall tiles of Islamic architecture. Tessellations are also found in nature. Look at these beautiful designs. And we also have man-made decorations. They are equally amazing. Regular tessellations. A regular tessellation is a tessellation made up of congruent regular polygons or polygons whose sides are all the same length. Only three regular polygons tessellate in the Euclidean plane, and these are triangles, squares, and hexagons. They fit together perfectly, as in the figures on the right. Semi-regular tessellations. A semi-regular tessellation has two properties, which are, number one, it is formed by regular polygons, and number two, the arrangement of polygons at every vertex point is identical. And we have eight semi-regular tessellations. These are the examples of decorations which are made up of semi-regular tessellations. Irregular tessellations. These are tessellations which are not made up of regular polygons, but instead they are cutouts, but they have to fit perfectly. Here are another examples of irregular tessellations. Fractals. A fractal is a rough or fragmented geometric shape that can be split into parts, each of which is approximately a reduced size copy of the whole. Fractals are amazingly complicated patterns often produced by very simple processes like reflection, rotation, and translation. They possess self-similarity. A shape is self-similar when it looks essentially the same from a distance as it is, as it does closer up. Self-similar objects appear the same under magnification. They are composed of smaller copies of themselves. Fractals in nature. Look at these trees. Each uh, big branch uh, reproduces itself into smaller branches. And look at this plant. Um, from uh, the, the core, it repeats itself and it rotates until it forms a beautiful plant which looks like a flower. Generating fractals. These are examples of the way fractals are generated. This is step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, 
and you can go on and on. Second example, um, we start with this line, line segment, which is the initiator. The length is equal to one. And then the generator, uh, we generate a, uh, a shape like this where something is protruded here in the middle of the initiator. And then uh, for every line segment, uh, something is uh, protruded until you come up with the next shape and the next shape. And it will go on and on. And you can observe this third pattern. It started with the initiator, which is a letter Y. This is the starting point. And at the end point of um, this, these two line segments, you produce another letter Y. And so on. Below are the first three stages of the Koch snowflake. And this triangle is called the Serpinski's triangle. It iterates a triangle by connecting the midpoints of the sides and shading the central triangle. Repeat this process for the unshaded triangles in stage one to get to stage two, and so on. As I look at the mathematical patterns around us, these words sum up my response. Mathematics is simply amazing. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel by clicking the button below. Bye-bye.